Hi everyone. For this video, we're going to focus on the uh, negative edge triggered flip-flop and I'm going to draw the symbol of that. So the two inputs to this flip-flop are J and K. There is also a clock input as well. So we've got J, K, we've got a clock, we've got Q, and we've got Q bar. And in terms of uh, the symbols here, this little triangle means that this flip-flop is edge triggered. In the lecture notes, we talked about the pulse triggered, um, positive pulse triggered, um, but this video is focusing on the negative edge triggered. So this triangle means it's edge triggered. This bubble means it's negative edge triggered, okay? And what that means is that this JK flip-flop is going to um, respond to inputs on the falling edge of the clock. So when the clock makes this downward transition from high to low, that's the negative edge um, that it is being being triggered on, okay? The falling edge of the clock. And the truth table for this flip-flop, when, when the clock, clock, when the clock is low, um, there's no change in the outputs. So we can write that as when the clock is low, and I'm just filling in the top of my table here with J, K, Q, and Q bar. When the clock is low, we can put an X here to say we don't care what J and K are, but the outputs are going to remain the same and be at Q and Q bar, whatever they were, okay? Um, and that's our no, that's a, that's a, a no change condition. Um, when the clock is making its negative edge trigger, then the states of J and K are going to be um, going to be considered. So, actually, let me put the set condition after the hold condition. Okay, so if J and K are zero. Um, there's no change in Q and Q bar, so they stay Q and Q bar respectively. If J is high, that is the set condition, so Q becomes high and Q bar zero. If K is high with J zero, that is the reset condition, uh, where Q bar is one and Q is zero. And if they're both high, um, Unlike the SR flip-flop, this is not an invalid state. This is an allowed state. Um, this is called the toggle state. So Q will become Q bar and Q bar becomes Q. And what we mean by that is that the outputs are, be are going to become the opposite of what they were. If they were high, they're going to become low. If they were low, they're going to become high. So if I can label uh, my states here, this is the um, the no change state, and let me just shorten my output bars so they don't interfere with my table diagram. So that's the no change state. Uh, we have the set state, the reset state, and that last state is the toggle state. Uh, and we're going to make use of that in some future circuits, um, but for now, Let's look at a timing diagram example so that you can see um, what happens with this type of, of circuit when we, um, this type of flip-flop when we change the inputs. Okay, so um, let's draw the clock waveform first because we know the inputs will not respond um, when the clock is low. It is nice to have the clock symbol written first on our timing diagram. So the clock symbol is just going up and down. Okay, 
let me just redraw that. I haven't quite saved enough room for, uh, for my example. Okay, so there's our clock symbol, uh, our clock signal. And then I have the J input. Um, and so I'm just gonna draw that very carefully. Okay, and then we have a K input. My drawing is quite a bit messy here, sorry about that. Okay, uh, and then I want to see what the output Q is doing. So that's a um, pretty messy diagram here. Let's draw some lines on it so that we can see um, where those negative uh, edge clock transitions are, right? So remember we said it's the falling edge of the clock because we've got this negative edge arrangement, um, negative edge triggered uh, symbol going on here. So it's the falling edge of the clock where the J and K inputs will uh, have an effect on the output. So I'm going to draw a line downward identifying where all those falling edges are. Okay. Uh, and then we can draw our output Q. So initially, um, we'll assume Q is reset. Now, at this point here, J becomes high, um, but we do not actually, the output does not actually respond to that. The output has no response until the falling edge of the clock. So the output will continue to be low until the clock edge falls. And at that time, J is high and K is low. So that will be a set condition. Now Q will stay set regardless of what K, J and K are doing there until the next falling edge of the clock. Uh, and at this falling edge of the clock, K and J and K are both zero. So Q is going to have a no change and it's gonna hold. At this falling edge of the clock, K is one and j is zero so that's a reset condition and then when uh, after that we're going to hold reset until the next edge of the clock at this edge of the clock uh, both uh, j and k are high so my output is going to toggle and that means it's going to become the opposite of wh whatever it was so here it is low it is going to become high and then on this edge of um, this next clock edge here, K is high, J is low, that's a reset condition. And then we hold till the next clock edge. And at this clock edge, um, J and K have actually both gone to zero. So we will just hold at zero. So you can see that in between the falling um, the falling edges of the clock, Q is not responding to the JK inputs. It's only at that falling edge transition where whatever J and K are at that moment of time is, is considered. And remember that the JK flip-flop has this nifty toggle state where if J and K are both one, the outputs will become the opposite of whatever they were. Okay.